Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today, we won't be drawing an illustration, but a story. A story of overgrown flowers and a genuine thought that didn't go as planned. So this will be for all levels, as I will be explaining my creative process and also sharing a few tips on how to make illustrations more interesting, even if portraits or anatomy or more advanced skills are just not your thing. Today, I will be using Windsor & Newton watercolor postcards. Obviously, you don't need any fancy kind of paper. This is just what I'm using because basically of the size. Also, as the title suggests, I will be using a normal ballpoint pen. Fun fact, I have a basket full of pigment liners, but still couldn't find one normal ball pen. So I had to make a quick stop at 7-Eleven to get one. So this is a normal 07 re retractable ball pen. My postcards have a rough side for watercolor, but it was too textured for my liking, so I flipped it because again, I just wanted a smaller size paper. And actually, this is my first tip. When you are starting, try not to overwhelm yourself by starting on a huge piece of paper. The smaller the paper is, the less likely you are to stress about what to draw. Also, when your illustrations are smaller, you have less details to worry about. If you have a larger paper, I strongly recommend to start by drawing a frame. It can be any shape you want. It will help you, first, to feel less intimidated, and second, it will definitely help with composition. So this is what I'm doing. I spent a solid 8 minutes just figuring out how I want my frame, and I had to speed it up by 1500 so I won't bore you to death, but yeah. At the end, I decided I wanted to make a Polaroid postcard and leave space for a little message. If you've seen my Instagram by any chance, you know I love uh, leaving small comments on my drawings, so I am doing that here as well. So, I love flowers, and whenever in doubt, I just start by sketching a simple version of one of my favorite flowers, chrysanthemums. My little hack for drawing these flowers is first drawing an oval shape, finding its center, and then it's easier to draw the petals. I have broken this down in much more details in a previous video, so I will link it up, uh, I will link it up here if you want to watch it, if you want to check it out. The concept so far was just drawing flowers, but as I went for the stem, I wanted to add leaves because while well, chrysanthemums have really beautiful leaves, and then I thought, what's the fun in that? So I removed the leaves and put thorns, and as I was sketching, the backstory started coming to me little by little. At that point, I knew I wanted to add a person, first because it made sense to my story, and second because there are many flowers, and they're automatically acting as a background, so I needed a new element as the focal point of my illustration. Again, when you make smaller illustrations, you don't have to worry about faces, and because we want to keep this simple, we're not even discussing anatomy, okay? She will be wearing a long, long sleeves dress and she will have gorgeous long black hair and she will add a lot of depth to our story without putting in too much effort. And you know what she'll be holding? A leaf.
Okay, I think I delayed it enough. It's story time. This illustration is the story of a lady who loved flowers, especially chrysanthemums. However, she'd see people cutting them all the time. She felt sad for the flower, so she casted a spell that made all the chrysanthemums in the world lose their beautiful leaves and grow thorns instead. But before she did that, she cut one leaf and kept it as a souvenir. Naturally, the thorns drove people away and the lady was happy to watch and enjoy the beautiful flowers grow in peace. The chrysanthemums started to grow and grow and grow. Before the spell turned their leaves into thorns, people would patiently wait for them at the beginning of each autumn season and gift them as a symbol of friendship. They felt most useful when they decorated people's homes. And they loved it when they saw people smile from ear to ear as they traveled to their hands and then their noses and then found their new homes in a classy vase. Little did the lady know that their purpose was to be presented happily in bouquets. The lady, happy and very proud of what she was able to achieve, approaches the flower. To her surprise, the flower was miserable. She hated towering over people. She hated being stuck in the ground. And she felt like she had nothing to live for anymore. The lady then said, I was only trying to help. The flower answered, I know, but I never asked for it. So yeah, this is the story. And it all started unraveling in my mind as I decided to draw thorns instead of leaves. And the takeaway from this is, you just have to start and dare to imagine. The story is open for interpretation and I would love to hear what you made of it in the comments. Was the lady a villain or a hero? Should the flowers in our story limit their dreams to making others happy? Or should they be free to choose their own limitations? Let me know in the comments that, uh, what you made of this. Well, I guess I got caught in the story part and now I don't have time to talk about inkin tips. But be sure that more of these are coming soon where I talk about all of it in detail, so stay tuned. I just wanted to add, in case you are wondering that the flowers in the sky have no particular meaning, I just used them to fill my background and, well, they kept you wondering. I hope you enjoyed the illustration and the story and more importantly, I hope you got inspired and made your own illustration. And if you'd like to share it, you can email me anytime and I would love to talk about it. Finally, take care of your dreams and goodbye.